knows Paul. He is a fixture around town. Cigar Reese. Hi, Cigar. Hi. So what, what was that like? And, and... Hello again, everybody. We're here with Stacy Lane, brand new principal, Dr. Margo Brasic. Got it right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're here on town meeting floor with none other than Judy Langone. Hello again, everybody. It's Jerry Slater, your town at work, and we are going back to school with someone who, candidly, we should probably only talk about her first name, like Beyonce. It's <laughs> Kristen McDonnell, Director of Guidance here at Norwood High and also wearing many hats that we're going to get into in a minute. But Kristen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And um, why don't you talk a little bit about what it's like to be the director of guidance here at Norwood High? Yeah, it's, it's like you said, the many hats um, fits in well to this. It, the nice part is you never know what your day is going to be. You know, you, you go from working with kids and, and kind of triaging some, you know, minor crises to some social emotional work back to you know SATs and talking about the college planning process, um, working with some kids on the academic piece and making sure that they're doing okay academically in their classes and progressing. Um, and then just you know trying to form good relationships as that's all going on, whether with staff or parents um, and especially the students. So you know it's guidance today is not, and you just said it, you know it, it's more than just, were you applying to college, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you're getting into to really the whole student. Has it, how has that changed? It's changed big time. You know, yeah. I would say I started probably 14 years ago, and at that point I would say it was more like 80% college career preparation and 20% social, emotional, and academic and whatever else needed to happen, and that has completely flip-flopped. So now we're doing probably more like 70 to 80% social, emotional stuff on a regular basis, and making sure that we get to that college and career piece because it's so important. Um, but I feel like we're always trying to fit it in. You know, it's something that we have to schedule classes for just to make sure that we get to that important material. And yeah. there's a lot of uh, and a lot of outreach now too. I know mm -hmm. you do a lot of parent nights, a lot of stuff with the students. And what, how, does, how does that working for you guys? Good, yeah. It's, um, we'd run probably about four or five evening programs a night um, for the parents, all well attended. Um, Parents are great here in general because they, they reach out to us anyway. So they're scheduling individual meetings. We're always on the phone with them. I would say just about every parent on my caseload, I feel like by the end of the four years, you know, you feel like is kind of a part of you. <laughs> um, and then you're going to have all their kids. And so you really get to know uh, the community here, which is nice. Yeah. That, I mean, and again, uh, your job is so tough because kids are, they're all different. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, you know, it, it's got to be, what's your biggest challenge really? Yeah, I think, you know, not being able to save the world is the yeah. hardest challenge. You know, it's you, you get so invested in these kids' lives and you hear some of the hardest stuff that you're going to hear about families and all you want them to do is, is be okay and you want to wave this magic wand that doesn't exist. Um, so I think the hard part is sometimes you feel so helpless through the process. That being said, if we can be even a little bit of a positive, you know, in their day, um, I think that's a, that's a big reward for us at the end of the day. You know, one of the things that I noticed that, and again, you know, that my, my kids graduated a few years ago, um, but I see social media is also, you guys are reaching out via mm -hmm. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how, how, how has that worked for you all? Yeah, we use whatever we possibly okay. can. You know, yeah, there's, um, you know, Facebook pages of Nord Public Schools and Norwood Now, and, um, you know, we're trying to just put out as much as we can as a message for to the community just to let them know what we're doing, you know, and I think a lot of times some of the negative just in the world gets talked about so much, people will jump all over something like that, so we want to make sure they're seeing all the other positives that are going on alongside that. Yeah. So we're, we're doing this right now, it's the beginning of December, um, so early admission mm -hmm. has started to early action will yep. start coming. Is this the busiest time of the year or? Yeah, it's, it used to be, now it's just all the time. <laughs> so I like, I wait for that downtime. Um, I get really excited about it, but it doesn't come. It never comes, um, yeah. But I will, yeah, I would say the beginning of the school year, September, uh, the fall is probably our busiest because it's college applications. Everybody now is going early. So November 1st is our big deadline. Um, so we're doing a lot of that beforehand. 
and then but then right when that ends the juniors start up you know with their college process and um, yeah it just it, it keeps going year round then we, we're already talking about scheduling I'm making forms right now that are 2000 2021 which is so crazy to me so it just seems like the the clock never stops so the team um, mm -hmm. we, we, sh we should talk about that. You, yeah. You've got a fabulous team and, and you've got some folks that have been with you for a while. You want to talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I'm so lucky, you know, yeah. and that's what makes it, uh, that's why I love my job, you know, is coming to school every day. They're such a good group of guidance counselors, like, and even better people. They're funny to be around, you know, so I think you can hear some pretty tough stuff on a daily basis. So you need to find comic relief and we do all the time. <laughs> so <laughs> we're able to laugh a lot. Uh, they're good at their job, so you know I don't have to micromanage at all. They just take it and go with it, and I trust that they're going to do a great job. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So we talked about the many, many hats. Um, we're we're going to segue a little bit to sports now, yes. which we would be remiss not to talk about. Boys basketball coach Norwood High. Yep. You are yep. a trailblazer here for sure. How's it going? Great. Yeah. The 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 guys have been awesome. You know, really just. I don't even want to say bought in because they had such a good foundation anyway, but things that we've you know, tried to, to get through, they've jumped right into. Um, they've embraced me, my coaching staff, uh, the energy's been really high, so we're just, you know, we had two quick weeks and then a game, um, so we're just trying to focus on the process, you know, just take little steps day to day. And I saw you get a little nervous when I said trailblazer, but I mean, again, yeah. you're, you're a woman. Mm -hmm. coaching a boys high school basketball team one of I don't know how many there are but yeah. probably not many yeah, not a lot yeah not a lot yeah what's the biggest difference between coaching the girls and coaching the boys or have you not figured that out no yet? I figured it out <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm like I'm gonna write a book on it after I think <laughs> okay. is where I'm gonna finally make my money um, because the the psychology of it all is so different like I, and I read a lot before I took over just to kind of see if there were any pieces that I might have been missing and obviously the day job helps because you work with them right. very closely but it is very interesting in terms of um, like the the listening piece of it sometimes <laughs> and I don't want to it's you you have to make sure that they're taking in the information a little bit more with the girls it's almost sometimes they're taking in too much of the information that you're giving them um, and internalizing some of that the boys sometimes you're you're trying to make sure you're getting completely through. So I've found that I've like repeated myself on many many occasions, <laughs> probably to an annoying point. Um, but I think it's just also a style thing. You know, they're yeah. just getting used to me. But they they've been great. The energy, like I said, has been awesome, and it's a very fun style of play. Like we just get up and down, and they run, and and you know that's a little bit different um, than the boys and the girls game. They're just yeah. the speed itself. So that's that's a lot of fun too. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine, you know, any, anyone who knows about teenage girls and teenage boys oh, yeah. definitely is it's resonating with you. Oh, yeah, it's everything you think it is. Yeah, yes, yep. it, exactly, yep. and probably then a little bit right. more. Yes. But, I mean, great call out, too, that they know you, mm -hmm. which is a, a little bit different than if you were walking into a situation and, you know, here's this woman and here's your new coach, right? Right, right. and I also okay. surrounded myself with good people, so we have a football-sized coaching staff. I have, we have so many kids on the team, so many coaches. We have chairs just going out like the, the exit door, but it's, um, the nice thing about that is they are like good male role models too, so I also understand boys need to see that as well. And so I think if we can provide kind of that total package, um, that it could be a, a good thing. Well, you are Kristen, so you know you are like Beyonce. Yeah, you right, should have I mean, an obviously. entourage, right? <laughs> right. <Kristen. laughs> right. <laughs> so let's let, let's talk about the third hat in the building mm -hmm. that I'm aware of, and that is um, the work that you do for NCM, doing Norwood News. Yeah. How is uh, how did that come about? Well. Jack Tolman came over um, and asked me to do it, and you can't say no to Jack because he does everything for everyone in the world. Um, and so even, I think I even tried, I had a busy week one day, and I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And, and he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. And you know, the next day he's right back, and I'm like, yep, we'll be doing this for a long time. You know? But I, I love it. You know, I will say I, it's a nice break from everything else during the day where I get to come over and do the news. And, I feel so on the cutting edge of everything that's happening in Norwood, um, so I can be the the start of any gossip that happens. It's a it's a huge advantage. 
Well, you're, you know, you're now the face of the news in Norwood, so um, any, anything you want to tell us? Any, any gossip? I'm that gonna we keep it, yeah, for now no, I'll keep okay. it between us. All right, on yeah. the DL. I'll just put it on Norwood News, I mean okay. Norwood, uh, Norwood Now. Norwood Now, <laughs> even better, yeah. even better. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you and um, the person. Um, where you live, where yep. you went to school, just what you like to do besides in your spare time, which is probably yeah, minimal. Yeah, few and far between. Yeah, um, yeah I'm from West Roxbury. Um, moved back there last year, so it was all over the place for a while. Uh, moved back there, went to Boston Latin School for high school, and then went on to uh, Stonehill, where I was able to play basketball there too, so that was a great, great experience for me. Um, yeah, and since I've just been kind of, I dabbled a lot with different things. I was a college coach for a while, and now, um, yeah, back in, in the hood of West Roxbury. So really excited to be there. In the free time I have, I would say, you know, I, I attempt to work out every once in a while. So that's, you know, probably part of it. I'm obsessed with my dog. So I have the greatest golden retriever um, in the world. So we spend a lot of time <laughs> together when we can. Uh, but just super. friends and family. As Dog's name? Mac. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yep. Must be a story there. We'll we'll talk yeah. about that off there. There. What's next? Yeah, I think you know I'm kind of living the good life right now. So you know if if this is my next, if this is five years from now, this is a really good thing. And if it's ten years from now, that's a really good thing. So you know I'm I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. Super. Yeah. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing more of you with your day job. We look forward to a winning season for the. Yep the Norwood High School boys yep. basketball team, all, yes, yes, from, from a lot our of players. lips. Yep, yep absolutely. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you on Norwood News um, on NCM as often as we possibly can. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate Thanks, it. Kristen. So with that, I think we're going to go to Fast Facts with Dave Thompson. The superintendent of schools um, basically manages the entire school system. So when people say, what does he do? He doesn't necessarily do a lot of particular things. Um, he manages everything. So everything kind of has to uh, be reviewed, overseen by. But there's a lot of other people who actually do the nitty gritty type work. Um, a lot of it, unfortunately, falls kind of into two categories, personnel. Um, and student issues, um, as well as working with the school committee to, uh, you know, set a vision for the uh, for the schools. <clears throat> Mainly, I'm, I'm at the Savage Center, um, but periodically, you know, in buildings around um, evening meetings. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of nights uh, in the schools. That's one of my favorite places to be. Um, working with. You know, I joke that I'm hanging out with the important people, which are the teachers and the students. That is, um, that is, the, you know, the core of our work is what goes on in the classroom, and still connecting to that um, is something that I value immensely. Well, yeah, the path to the superintendency. I mean, it's not like I I, I woke up at age 12 when I said I wanted to be a school superintendent. Um, you know, and I, and I tell you know I tell people that I wasn't even going to be a teacher um, until you know I went off to college. I was a, a pre met pre veterinary science major, biology major. Um, I kind of discovered that um, I wasn't quite serious at, as you know, probably more serious now, but you know to sit down and really because it's actually more difficult to be a veterinarian than it is to be a doctor in a lot of cases. Uh, there's fewer schools and it's more competitive to get in. Um, so then I started biology, and I'm like, what am I going to do this? And I came back to uh, my roots as a camp counselor and working with kids, um, my roots as a, as a church youth group leader, and, and that's it. And really enjoyed working with children, and then teaching became kind of a natural um, evolution. Most important people in my life. Um, I'd have to start, obviously, with my parents, especially my mother. Um, strong person. Um, always expected us to do the best we can and to keep improving. Um, very supportive, but pretty, pretty strict as well, um, which probably was needed at one point in time, but we won't talk about that. Um, and then, um, you, know, you know, I have a very um, large scouting background, so there's a tremendous number of people 
uh, assistant scout masters, um, camp directors and people that, that I worked with that I've learned a lot from. Um, but just time with family, um, relaxing at home. We have um, a Portuguese water dog that runs the house and we love, so spending time uh, with her and my girls, you know, hiking, being outdoors. Um, <clears throat> I love the barbecue and, and, uh, and do, you know, smoke, you know, pork butt and all that sort of stuff, so cooking is, uh, is, is a fun time. You know, my, you know, the day we got married would be um, way up there. I'm, I'm a very lucky man. Um, and, you know, and the birth of my daughters would be the, would be the next two things. First concert, The Cars, 1981, I think, in Boston. Okay, all the Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars geek. To watch football, um, to play basketball. Favorite book, uh, Lord of the Rings. Oof, I am addicted to Richardson's A Totally Turtle. Welcome back again, everybody. And we're still at the beautiful Norwood High School, sitting on our new set in the library with a new friend. And actually the person who runs the school, but don't tell um, Mr. Galligan that. I'm here with my good friend, Lisa, and I'm gonna screw up the last name. Colossimo. Colossimo, yes, like the Coliseum. Coliseum. Exactly, exactly. And True for Italian. Folks, <laughs> for folks who don't know Lisa, Lisa is the secretary to the principal here at Norwood High School. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about um, kind of her path back to her home and um, what, she, what she does and some of the interesting kind of fun facts about her as well. But Lisa, let's, let's start with your job here mm -hmm. at Norwood or High. You're kind of the epicenter and you're certainly in the epicenter. What do you do in your role? Well, basically, I take care of all the needs of um, the school and the school principal, um, manage all the ordering, um, purchasing, and um, correspondence, take care of parents and students, and every day is different, you know, yeah. and that's what I love about this job. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's home. It's, it's just like coming home. It's my second home, um, and, um, and just taking care of everybody. <laughs> So you've got, so um, you came back to Norwood High, when is that when you started or? I, um, well I worked in various roles over the years after I graduated from Framingham State. Um, had all good intentions of going into international business and then the path just led me in different directions. I worked for the American Red Cross for 12 years and um, really enjoyed working with people. I knew that I was a people person. Um, then had, had a big layoff and had to rethink, gee, what do I really want to do? And I really um, just wanted to help people. And then this job opened up and, um, and it was great. It's my calling, you know, I just, it's like home. I love all things Norwood <laughs> and it was just the perfect fit. So it, it must be interesting for you because probably every kid that walks into school, you know their families, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. certainly know their parents. Yeah. What is that like? It's, it's great, you know? It's, it, again, it's like, it's like being in my second home. 
you know, and I, I can't say enough about the staff. The staff here are like family, and they, they all get along with each other. It's, it's just such a great place to work. Um, the students are really lucky, I have to say. You know, they all enjoy coming to school. We have students that come in and will get dismissed for a doctor's appointment, but they want to come back. Wow. And it's just like, wow, you know, they want to come back. So that's a good feeling. It is a good feeling. Yeah. And, and it is, you know, it kind of, and it starts at the front office, for right. sure. Right. So typical day for you. What, let's walk through. Um, yeah. Um, what, is, what is that like? So we'll come in and we'll take care of any staff absences, make sure there's coverage for the classrooms, um, take care of any student needs, um, a lot of phone calls in the morning. Um, just every day is, is different. So it's really tough to say, but it's fast paced. We're always, we're always on the minute we walk in the door. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but it makes the day go by. It's, it's fast and, you know, fun. It's actually fun. <laughs> so there's a, you know, so Dr. Galligan has been here, this is his second year. Yes, and yes. Cindy Durain. Yes. The lovely Cindy Durain. Yes, um, we're so lucky. They are the best. What a team. Very so, impressive to watch. What is it like, you know, seeing that unfold? Because they didn't, they didn't know each other, right? Right. And Cindy has been here She's another one who knows where all the bodies are buried. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> she, she, she's been here, I think it's been 27 or 28 years now. And um, even though she's not from Norwood, you'd never know it. She is just fabulous. She, she does know the ins and outs and is wonderful. I, I can't say enough about both of them together. What a team. Totally impressed. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about you. You're, we talked about this before we, we, we started. You are a townie. I am a townie. Yep, I sure am. True townie, as I know. Norwood Hospital? Norwood Hospital, Draper Building. Yep. Okay, and yep. lived here all your life? Lived here all my life. Um, was born in the flats and went to the Balch School. I had Mr. Bellotta. Um, yep, still... Uh, still go back and visit every now and then. I just, um, I love all things Norwood. And, you know, I've got NCM running pretty much all day <laughs> sometimes. It's just crazy. But um, yeah, it's my hometown and, and I love it. And I'm, I'm very grateful to live in such a great town, great community. And children, I know your son. Yep, I have one son just graduated. Um, Norwood High last year. He's um, now at Stonehill College and, um, and doing great. That's awesome. Doing great. Yeah. That's awesome. And we were talking about uh, Man on the Hill a, a yeah. second ago. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he did the Man on the Hill and, and had a great time. He, um, he actually sings and um, he's part of the, the choral group at Stonehill. Um, yeah. So wow. We, and that's close enough that you can go see him now. Yes, exactly. I also heard a rumor, and you need to confirm and tell me a little bit about this, that you speak multiple languages. Not sure if the number is four or five. I've heard two different versions. So Let's see. Well, take us uh, through. Um, English. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> English. Italian. <laughs> Czech. Uh, Italian, Spanish, and French. And yeah. I think you've been to Italy, right? Have yes. Have you been to all those countries? or No, I have not. Um, we usually go to Italy... You know, we try to get there every year. Um, my husband is from Italy and um, has all his family there. I have family there. And, um, but I would love to expand and, and try to go to other countries one of these days. It's on my bucket list. Is it? Yeah. And, and how did you get into the, the language thing? That's, that's so interesting. I, I just always had a knack for it. Um, growing up Italian, we spoke Italian at home. And um, it just came naturally. So um, it was something I was good at and uh, studied, majored in um, Spanish and French at, in college. And um, it helps, you know, it helps sometimes here with translating. Um, I'd love to learn other languages, believe it or not. Um, German and Chinese are, <laughs> oh, wow. are on my uh, list to learn one of these days. But um, yeah, and Portuguese is actually um, pretty big too. 
Um, so one of these days, it, it helps. It helps with families, incoming families. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, being in the front office. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and I, that's one of the interesting things. Mm -hmm. um, and I know in Norwood in particular, mm -hmm. we have a lot of um, diversity. And yeah, yeah it really, um, it helps, especially when a new family comes in. And some of them really don't speak any English. So it's nice to have someone there that can at least can help a little. You know, I, I can't say I'm the best at, you know, speaking these languages, but just the little bit that I can help, it makes them feel at home. Exactly. Yeah, right. it exactly definitely right. helps. Yeah. So segueing a little bit, talked about the languages, talked about family, we mm -hmm. talked about the day job. So what does Lisa, what do you like to do when you're not here at, at work? What, what, how do you spend your time? Believe it or not, I, I just started crafting. Oh. Um, you know, with my son off to college, I mean, I spent a lot of time with him and taking him places and sports and driving him around. And, and now it's time for me. I have some me time. And um, I, just, I just started crafting, which is, it was, it's fun. It's fun. So, so what uh, sorts of things? That, so we're, going to, we're talking D, DIY, right? DIY, exactly. exactly. Yep, love all the home and garden channels and, and cooking. Cooking is another thing that, that I truly love to do. So Baking. What are, you, what are you doing with the crafts now? What, what sorts of things? Um, anything, really. Anything. Okay. Um, you know, just trying to, you know, make personalized items. Something that's personal and I don't want to give away any Christmas gifts. Okay. So. All right. We don't want a spoiler. <laughs> we don't want a spoiler. But, um, but yeah, just going on Pinterest and getting ideas. We're, we're lucky to have, you know, that because. technology to be able to cheat a little sometimes. And so we're thinking, so I'm thinking <laughs> next year's craft affair. Yes. There'll be a Lisa table? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Look for the, look for the table. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end on that because that that could be look for that next year. So again, um, Lisa, we are lucky to have you here at Norway High. You. The Thank students, you. the staff, um, lucky that you came home to Norwood. Thank you. And thank you. I love it here. Super. So you know when you stop by the front office here at Norwood High School, make sure you say hello to Lisa, and for your town at work. That's Jerry Slater. Anybody who knows Paul, he is a fixture around town. Seagal Reese. Hi, Seagal. Hi. So what, what was that like? And, and Hello again, everybody. We're here with Stacy Lane, brand new principal, Dr. Margo Grasek. Got it right? Yes. OK. <laughs> We're here on town meeting floor with none other than Judy Langone, 